So for the med pack, for example, it asks if your credits are greater than or equal to 30, which is my set price for this item, then what you do is you take your the amount of credits you currently have, you subtract that amount by 30, and then you store that back in credits because if you don't do this, the player will never, never actually spend that amount because nothing will be done to his amount of credits that he has. So this just subtracts the, uh, what it does is it takes the price of the item and it subtracts that from his total amount of credits. After it does that, it gives him the med kit in his inventory, which basically means that it just heals him. It doesn't actually put anything into an inventory. And then it prints this message that tells the player that the med kit's been purchased and then it tells how many credits are left. And what we have down here is what's called an else statement. What this says is if this is not true, then the else statement will happen. So in other words, if credits is not greater than or equal to 30, it will print this message which says not enough credits for the med kit and then it also has the price on the next line. And down here we have, uh, for script 6, we have the chain gun. It's very similar. The only difference is I have 100 here instead of 30 because I want to test uh, 100 since that's how much it costs. And then we have the same line of code here that subtracts 100 from the player's amount of credits. It uh, What it does here is it gives him a chain gun in his inventory. And then what this code here does, set weapon, is it makes the chain gun the active weapon. If you don't have this line, you'll still get the chain gun, but it won't switch over to it automatically. And then what it does here is it just prints the message telling you you've purchased it, and it shows you your amount of credits left. And then just like the script above this one, we have an else statement that happens if you don't have enough credits. And what this does is it just tells you you don't have enough and tells you uh, what the price of the item actually is. And these two scripts, which are 5 and 6, are very similar to the ATM machine and the NPC. They're just set to lines right here, which are the walls right in front of the vendors. And you'll see that they just have the script execute action. And these two are repeatable because you want the player to be able to come back to the shop and to be able to check the line multiple times. That way, you, you know, you, it just makes sense because if you didn't have repeatable, let's say you didn't have enough money to get it the first time. Well, if you were to come back, it wouldn't let you try it again. So if you want to make a shop that can be tested over and over again, you have to make it repeatable. That way the player can come back to the shop and try it multiple times. So uh, really that's all that there is to it. Uh, there definitely is some learning there uh, in regards to learning what the code does. If you've had any previous programming experience, it definitely will help. But, you know, once you get, get the hang of these different pieces of code and what they do, it's not all that difficult. And I would recommend going to zdoom.org slash wiki and checking out some of the code examples they have there because it's really helpful. So uh, I hope this helps give you guys an idea of how I created this and uh, hopefully it will allow you to create your own uh, RPG experiences.